Max here. In this video, we'll cover saving and loading. Most games at some point will need some kind of saving and loading. For instance, maybe you want to incorporate a high score, or maybe some kind of checkpoint system, or maybe something even more complex, like multiple save files. In each of these examples, there is something about our game that we want to say the same between sessions. We can accomplish this in GDevelop through saving and loading, specifically through a mechanism called storage. Let's take a look at some examples. As you can see, we have here a kind of high score system where when we die, we are shown our high score. This high score, though, does not persist between different sessions, as you can see here. So let's fix that. We already have the basic logic for this scaffolded out right here. When the player dies, we check to see if the current score is higher than our scene variable for high score. And if it is, we change the high score to that current score. What we need to do here is save that high score to storage, where it can then be loaded at a later time. For this, gdevelop gives us the write a value action or write a text action for numbers and text respectively. Our score is a number, so we'll choose the write a value action. We'll select the storage storage and choose a group of high score. This tells gdevelop exactly where to put our information so that we can retrieve it later on. Finally, we'll write the score itself into storage. Now in the beginning of our scene, we'll load this high score in from storage and to do that, we have the read a value and read a text actions. Once again, we'll choose the value option and we will fill out the same details from earlier. One other thing that's good to be aware of is the existence condition for storage. This allows you to check to make sure that the storage is written before actually reading it. This can be very useful sometimes, so I thought I would at least mention it. Now our high score is in fact working. By the way, one last thing to mention that I have sort of glossed over is the fact that storage is read into a scene variable. In particular, you're going to have to make sure to initialize your scene variables in the scene variable list before you can read from storage into them. We have a whole video on variables, by the way, so definitely check that out if you're a bit confused by this. Now, for this next example, we'd like to introduce a kind of checkpoint system where after we traverse between levels and restart our game, we start not from the beginning, but from our last level. The implementation of this is actually quite similar to the high score example. When our level changes, we write into the level group of our storage. And when the scene starts, we're going to read that level into a scene variable. Importantly though, in this case, we're storing our level variable as a global variable. As we mentioned earlier though, information from storage is loaded into a scene variable. Thus, we'll have to use the initial level scene variable as a kind of passing variable to get us from scene to global, which we do in this particular action. Now our game will start from our last level instead of from the very beginning when we open our game. Finally, there are a couple of actions I haven't mentioned that are important. For one, there is the clear a storage action, which will just empty an entire storage and the delete an element action, which just deletes a single group. Then there's also the load a storage in memory action. This will allow you to save and load much quicker and is useful when you have a lot of stuff you're saving and loading. For example, here we're loading the level, the health, and the score. And as we continue to load more and more stuff, we may find that it will degrade the performance, which is why we've used the load a storage action here. Just make sure to always use the close a storage action after you finish saving and loading. So this has been an attempt at a more basic introduction to the concept of storage. Of course, it goes a lot deeper. So if you're still interested in stuff like multiple save slots or really in-depth save data, then we'll surely be making a video down the road that goes really in-depth on the topic. In the meantime, though, the concepts presented in this video should be enough to get you a very long way. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful to you, and as per usual, we love to hear your feedback in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.